Greetings, my fellow astronomers, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Today, we are going to approach a topic that is a bit different from what I've been doing lately. At the suggestion of a couple of my subscribers, who advised me that this specific topic is a lesser-known part of 40k lore, and that I should also be covering broader topics instead of focusing on single things too much, so I thought this topic checks both those boxes, and while it will probably get fewer views than my Imperial Guard videos, I think it's some interesting stuff to know, especially for fans of the Imperium. And I am, of course, talking about planet types in the 40k setting. So I decided to do this mini-series with a specific structure in mind. This episode will be dedicated to a few general aspects of 40k worlds, mostly from the Imperial perspective, and also to cover a number of world types about which there isn't much lore available. Then, in the next videos, I will go into more detail about the world types that do have some lore written about them, like hive planets, agri-worlds, etc., I do apologize in advance if the stuff I will talk to you about in this video will sound a bit like a shopping list. But when you try to describe like a dozen types of planets, it will inevitably end up sounding like that. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see what kinds of worlds the Imperium is made of, shall we? The Imperium of Man is spread impossibly thin across an estimated two-thirds of the entire Milky Way galaxy. The volume of space claimed in the name of the Emperor contains hundreds of millions of stars, many host to their own planetary systems. While it is true that some governors rule not only a single planet, but an entire star system, and that other worlds have no governor at all, the fact is that the Imperium is stretched so thinly across the void that an interstellar traveler could make his way from one edge of the galaxy to another, traversing a hundred thousand light years of space, and not once happen across a single human being. Instead of being scattered at random, the worlds of the Imperium are clustered around areas settled during the last stage of mankind's greatest wave of expansion into the galaxy, in the Dark Age of Technology. Worlds once colonized because of their location or some desirable natural resource have developed into the cores of sectors, many of which have swollen to include hundreds of star systems. These sectors are connected to one another by relatively stable, if still dangerous, intersector warp routes, and the vast uncharted reaches between each is referred to as wilderness space. These unexplored depths harbor many kinds of terror, from ravening pirates to unknown alien empires, as well as untold riches from long-lost human colonies to worlds strewn with the wealth of long-extinct Xenos species. The Imperium encompasses countless worlds. No one has ever been able to map all of them, and no one can truly say how many there are beyond the official figure of one million normally cited in most sources. Entire departments of the Administratum are devoted to cataloging the worlds in the Emperor's domain, which is a never-ending task because it is always in a state of flux. The true scope of the Imperium is, therefore, the entire galaxy, though this is far from actuality. The Imperium jealously guards its territory whenever it can, but the sheer size of it means that they cannot react to every circumstance. Many planets live and die by themselves, with only the truly great threats commanding the attention of the entire Adeptus Terra. Worlds are often lost to aliens, rebellion, disasters, and news of their destruction sometimes takes centuries to reach Terra. The Imperium's borders undergo constant change, with new worlds discovered, conquered, colonized, and old ones lost to Xeno's invasion, exterminatus, demonic incursion, or even to the warp itself. And like I mentioned in the beginning, in this video I will be covering the world types 
about which there isn't much known or a lot of lore available. And most of the worlds, as categorized by the Administratum, are as follows. In this I will also include the types which I will cover separately. But until then, here we go, as it is quite a lengthy list. The Feudal Worlds, the Feral Worlds, Forge Worlds, Armory Worlds, Hive Worlds, Shrine Worlds, Cardinal Worlds, Cemetery Worlds, Pleasure Worlds, War Worlds, Fortress Worlds, Dead Worlds, Tomb Worlds, Agri Worlds, Civilized Worlds, Space Marine Chapter Home Worlds, Death Worlds, Mining Worlds, Industrial Worlds, Waste Worlds, Forbidden Worlds, Frontier Worlds, Xenos Worlds, and Demon Worlds. I will purposefully omit for now the planets which are categorized based on their climate like Ice Worlds, Desert Worlds, Jungle Worlds, etc. because Imperial planets are not restricted by weather. The types that I will cover separately, in case you wanted to know in advance, are Feudal Worlds, Feral Worlds, Hive Worlds, Shrine Worlds, Pleasure or Garden Worlds, Death Worlds, Agri Worlds, Frontier Worlds, and Forbidden Worlds. There will also be a few that I will omit on purpose, such as Tomb Worlds, Crone Worlds, or Demon Worlds, because they are relevant to things I haven't properly introduced yet, and I want to make separate videos of them when the time comes. But by now, I guess you're tired of hearing me say the word worlds, which is why I will get into the thick of it right away, with, wait for it, even more worlds. An armory world is an imperial term for a planet that is used by the Departamento Munitorum to store vast amounts of weapons, ammunition, and war machines. These heavily defended worlds are the places where weapons, vehicles, ammunition, and other military equipment are stored while they wait to be transported to wherever they are needed. An armory world could have thousands of armored vehicles of every type, and millions of tons of munitions and other material stored in its vast storehouses for hundreds of years until the Imperium has need of them. Some armory worlds store vehicles, weapons, and other equipment that are so old that the secrets of their manufacture has been forgotten by the Adeptus Mechanicus, such as the ancient Imperial heavy tank known as the Valdor Tank Hunter. A Cardinal World is an Imperial planet ruled directly by the Ecclesiarchy, that is completely dedicated to the worship of the God Emperor according to the tenets of the Imperial cult. With Imperial sanctuaries, cathedrals and temples potentially covering entire continents. Aside from already also being classified as a shrine world, that is a particularly important center of the Ecclesiarchy's power and the destination for many pilgrims of the Imperial cult, Cardinal Worlds also serve as a base of operations for many orders of the Adepta Sororitas. One example of an important Cardinal World is Ophelia Seven, whose spiritual significance to the Imperial cult is second only to that of Terra. The planetary governor of a Cardinal World is, you guessed it, a Cardinal of the Adeptus Ministorum who often leads the Ecclesiarchy's hierarchy in an entire sector of Imperial space. A cemetery world is an Imperial planet where large areas of the planet's surface have been given over to care for the remains of the honored Imperial dead, and are also administered by the Ecclesiarchy just like shrine worlds. Cemetery worlds may mark the site of a massive battle, or they may be covered in gigantic mausoleums, each dedicated to a particular imperial noble family. In contrast, some rare cemetery worlds may be covered in fields of endless, modest burial plots containing the remains of the inhabitants of a nearby hive world. A war world is an imperial planet that is part of an active war zone. The Imperium of Man is constantly at war, and during those conflicts, whole planets can burn. Massive Imperial military campaigns and crusades can envelop dozens of star systems and hundreds of planets, 
many of which are utterly devastated by orbital bombardment and artillery in planet-spanning battles that can last for decades. Long-term war zones are hellish places where death comes quickly. The Imperium can field massive armies of millions of men, grinding their way across a devastated planet and reducing its cities to rubble. Mercenaries flock to such places, hoping to leave soon after with their ships loaded with pay and loot. Deserters and escaped prisoners form bands of pirates, preying on any starships unable to defend themselves. Planet-bound, these reavers roam the war-torn worlds in feral packs, stealing anything not nailed down and killing anyone who gets in their way. The Administratum sometimes sends colonists from overcrowded worlds to repopulate such war-torn worlds after the fighting has ended. But the bureaucratic wheels of the Imperium grind slowly, and the world can lie devastated for centuries before any effort is made to resettle it. These places can be some of the most ghastly in the Imperium, with ravaged environments, cracked planetary crust, burned-out cities, and plains covered in the rotting flesh of the fallen. A fortress world is a type of planet within the Imperium that serves as a bastion of the Imperium's defense against some constant and persistent threat to Imperial space. These worlds are extremely well defended, usually with large numbers of Imperial Guard forces and Imperial Navy assets, and their populations and economies are wholly geared towards meeting the demands of Imperial defense. Unfortunately, not all fortress worlds are controlled by the Imperium, as several have fallen to the control of the traitor legions. The most famous fortress world in the Imperium is Cadia, which defends, or should I say used to defend, the Cadian Gate, the only stable passage through the warp from the Eye of Terror into Imperial space. A civilized world, also called a developing world, is a planet whose development has been allowed to progress over the millennia naturally, without any specific purpose to fulfill. These worlds are generally self-sufficient in terms of food supply and have varying manufacturing, technological, and industrial capability. Civilized worlds are split into geographical areas with widely varying levels of technological advancement or culture. Depending on the prevailing government, these might be countries, states, power blocks, or tribal homelands. It may be the case that higher levels of technology and wealth are concentrated around the original human colonization site. Other planets in this class might exhibit gross variations in culture due to environment, with areas weak in natural resources being similarly weak in terms of military power economic muscle, and so on. Some planets preserve a great divide due to ancient tribal taboos, religious notions, or plain old-fashioned habit. A great many worlds of the Imperium fit into this broad category, but no two are alike in the way they realize these developmental divides. By the Imperial Planetological Classification Guidelines, a civilized world is one that has a population from 15 million all the way up to 10 billion people, and pays moderately high imperial tithes. It may have large, sprawling urban areas, but none have yet reached the level of population density or self-sufficiency to be considered a true hive city. Many civilized worlds may be equivalent in culture and population levels to Old Earth, during the Age of Progress, in the early 3rd millennium. Pleasure worlds, mining worlds, and some shrine worlds can be subtypes of a civilized world. A mining world is an imperial planet rich in one or more of the raw strategic materials required by the Imperium's Manufactoria and Forge worlds. The people of the mining worlds are likely to be slaves or penal workers of the Adeptus Arbites, to live out their lives mining and transporting massive quantities of metallic ore, rocks, minerals, frozen gases, or some other useful material. Mining worlds tend to be rather inhospitable places, 
and many do not even possess a breathable atmosphere. Though a few may support a greater variety of life, developed cities, and even hives. An industrial world is a type of planet of the Imperium whose surface is devoted solely to manufacturing or heavy mining and refining activities. These worlds have surprisingly sparse populations in relation to hive or forge worlds, which also are often heavily dedicated to industrial activity, as most of the labor on true industrial worlds is done using machines or some other form of automation. Those industrial worlds whose primary function is mining and refining are usually blessed with an unusually abundant reserve of highly strategic minerals in order to justify the expense of the investments in technology, labor, and other resources. Waste Worlds Waste worlds are planets of the Imperium whose surfaces are devoted wholly to the dumping and storage of unusable material, chemical and biological waste, and other useless and toxic manufacturing products. There is little information on these planets in Imperial records, and it is unknown if these planets have any inhabitants, or if any recycling efforts are undertaken by the Imperium or the Mechanicus. A Xenos World A Xenos World is the designation given to a planet by the Adeptus Administratum that lies outside of the bounds and control of the Imperium, and that is the home world or colony world of an intelligent alien species. Most alien races inhabit only a single world, that is their original planet, or a small group of worlds that they have recently settled in star systems close to their home world. The majority of intelligent alien species are comparatively technologically primitive, unaggressive, or lack any true power in the interstellar arena. This means they are of no interest to the Imperium unless they are occupying unusually resource-rich worlds, otherwise possess something the Imperium needs, or represent a threat to the lives and property of mankind. Only a few of the intelligent races in the galaxy are numerous enough, aggressive enough, or powerful enough to serve as rivals of the Imperium and who must be dealt with severely. Of these, by far the most common are the Orcs, the Eldar, the Dark Eldar, the Necrons, the Tau, and the Tyranids. And all these, my friends, have been most of the world types of the Imperium, and maybe a couple outside of Imperial jurisdiction. I hope you enjoyed learning about these types of planets, and rest assured that the next few videos in this mini-series will be a bit more relaxed, as I will be covering only two or three kinds per episode. Which of these worlds did you find more interesting? Let me know in the comments below, along with any questions or thoughts you might have. I thank you very much for watching, and wish you an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.